first, we welcome the doctor to talk about breast cancer awareness. Continuing with our Pink October series, our very own Yumna Naufel talks to a breast cancer survivor and her daughter. Over to you, Yumna. Thank you, Linda. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Leila Ajam and her daughter Aya today, named by WE Initiative, a positive, righteous, and a beautiful person inside and out. Leila Ajam was diagnosed with cancer in 2005 at the age of 47. In 2006, Future TV's Zaven hosted Leila as his guest, making her the first woman in Lebanon to go live on television and talk about breast cancer. Welcome, Leila. Mm. Thank you for Thank being you. here. You've told me before, because we sat down and we talked about this, that there was no history of breast cancer in the family, yes. and you were eating right, no alcohol, yeah. exercising, no smoking. So exactly. what, was, what was your reaction like when they told you that you had breast it cancer? It was shocked for me because I was doing my uh, a yearly checkup, and just because I'm doing my yearly checkup, this is how I know that I have breast cancer. And it was shocked for me because uh, I'm, I'm doing the right things, and it happened that I have breast cancer. And they told you it was just a string of bad luck. Yes, it so is. So at the time that you were diagnosed with breast cancer, breast cancer was not really talked about in Lebanon because yeah. you said it was a big taboo. Yes. So what made you go out and say, look at me, this is what I'm going to go through. I'm not going to hide from the world. Because I love life. <laughs> I love to go out. I like to see people. I like to see the nature. I don't want to hide. And I think I don't do something wrong. This is what God willing. Maybe there is something uh, about it. This is why uh, I have a uh, breast cancer. I don't know why. But, uh, but um, uh, just because I love life. I don't want to stay home or hide from people. You, were not, you weren't embarrassed at all. You said, I'm going to no, talk about no, it. No. I know that you inspired a lot of women to go out and get mammograms because you yeah. said that more and more women now are getting it at a younger age. And after you went on television and spoke about it, more women were aware of it. I let them wake up. Yeah. Yeah, wake up. You should do uh, a mammography. You should do ultrasound. You should uh, test yourself, uh, uh, especially if they have history, especially if they are not in a good condition in their health. This is very important to do mammography, ultrasound every year, and especially if, if they have mom or sister or genetic in the family. Okay. They should go. You went through chemotherapy? Yes. How, many, how much time of chemotherapy? Uh, eight sessions of chemotherapy. It did was so hard. Did you lose your... Yes, I lost my hair from the first session, believe it or not. Then uh, my daughter, Noor, uh, my daughter, Aya, Noor, Samar, I have three girls. They helped me a lot. I know, and we're going to talk to Aya about <laughs> this in one second. I know that usually when, you know, women lose their hair, they go and they buy wigs. But you said, yeah. I'm just going to wear my scarf and make it very fashionable. And this is where you <laughs> came in. And I want to know a little bit about how you, how, how did you feel when your mom was diagnosed um, with breast cancer? Uh, how I reacted, you mean? Well, my reaction was, um, I honestly felt that um, I got diagnosed with cancer. That, that's, that's how much uh, the, the fear was. So it was kind of like a reality check. And um, so, yeah, of course, it, w it was a scary moment because um, at the time, I, uh, we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what s stage um, she was in or, or, or anything about it. So, so I went ahead and, and I did my own research and, and I, I talked to friends that had breast cancer. What did you find out? What was the prevalent thing you found out? Well, first of all, there's a, there is a cure. And a lot of women do get cured if there is a, if you have an early de detection, which your mom did have. So, which your mom yeah, did so have. Yeah, so that right. was that was really you know knowledge is power, and it it it, it brought more peace, uh, uh, I guess, within me. So that was my personal. I remember when we were talking about this earlier. You said a, a defining moment was after your mom had undergone surgery. Yeah. And you walked into the room. Can you tell me about that moment? Um, she was, she was, um, she got out of the surgery. She didn't know uh, what, what happened in, in the surgery because they, ha they have to remove, like, the, the lymph nodes. So, um, so I guess when she got out of the surgery and into the room and I walked in there and she, and it was just sort of chaotic with her. She was just, she had just woken up from the surgery. And um, so she asked me um, if... Uh, if everything was okay, if everything was still intact uh, with her. And, and basically, I just looked at her straight in the eye and I said, 
don't worry, everything is still intact. You're fine. Yeah. The only thing yeah. I want to know if they remove my breast. Yes, <laughs> they did. Did they? Well, and so I just wanted to reassure her, and, and I knew that that was what what was bothering her. So. I want to commend you on your strength as a woman, but also on your fashionable sense that you got from your daughter. So the whole wig thing, I remember we talked about that. You said, let's not do the wig, let's do the scarf thing. Yeah, so let's, 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 not, do anything, let's not do anything fake. Let's just, um, you know, every, every person has to go through uh, certain moments in their life. Let's just, let's just uh, dress it up. Let's just put makeup on it. Whatever. But, uh, but you know what? I get the wigs because, you know, I know Did you ever wear a wig? Uh, 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 you know, everybody, uh, when they have, br uh, uh, they don't have hair, immediately they wear uh, a wig. W I, bu I bought it and I put it on my head. Then I tried to touch it. Then I feel myself. It I'm was fake. odd. <laughs> I'm fake. It's not me. So, so my, even dad, the color my, dad, the same. my dad didn't approve of the He wasn't comfortable with the wig. Okay. But when we, when, uh, when, um, when we did the whole scarf thing, because at that time, Kylie Minogue went through breast cancer right. and her hair fell off and so and I liked what she did with herself but she didn't hide it so she 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 put the scarf in a really trendy way so I was like let's uh, let's try this when you, when you think about it today seven years later eight years later do you think okay I came out I talked about it I'm proud to have yes. talked about it what message do you want women today to know uh, you know um, because I'm very healthy. I consider myself, I'm very healthy. I'm a uh, regular checkup in everything, blood, my teeth, everything. She eats well, she does sports. Even my eyes, everything checkup. So uh, uh, as you said, I do uh, exercise, I run, uh, everything, I'm a healthy person. I get diagnosed with cancer. How about people uh, they don't do all of this. This is why, please, please, the mammography, they do all their best in Lebanon to do it in a very good prices. So anybody can do a mammography and ultrasound to check it at the beginning. This is very important. And advantage. you know what? Very important. Like your age, also, they should also consider it and go and do yeah. mammography. It's not now 40 years or 35 years old, they, uh, they do mammography. I, I went for an, for an ultrasound this Tuesday. Oh, I did. I mean, I, I felt I felt it was <laughs> important for breast cancer yes. awareness. It wasn't so month. bad. It was no. I mean, I think it's just yeah. important to let women know what's out there. But most importantly, not to be ashamed of it. Because yeah. why do you think it's such a taboo in Lebanon? Uh, why do you think I it don't is a know. Taboo? You know what? Maybe because uh, uh, they will lose their hair. Uh, this is maybe uh, they consider it something bad. How they will look that they don't have hair. They feel uh, shy about themselves. I don't know why. Th there is no reason to be shy While from you were going self. through it and you were going out yeah. and you were seeing people, do you remember their reaction towards you? Do you remember anybody being, saying something like, How do, why would you do this? Why didn't you leave the country? Uh, as I told you, I love life. I have my family. Uh, they support me. I have my friends. But did others look at you differently? Um, you know, um, some people, yes. Some people, they think uh, it's bad. Some people, they don't like it. Some people, they don't mention it even. Uh, mm. I don't know why, but now I think these days they change. They change their mind because uh, people now, they go out, they can talk about it like on TV. Uh, they go, uh, they can say about it, not like before it was taboo. They begin to change, but still some people, they don't like it. What did you take okay. from all this? I mean, you know, you're a younger woman, obviously much younger, and you know, you saw your mom go through this. So what would you advise anybody who has a family member going through this right now? Um, okay, that, that uh, well, first of all, everyone should just, do, just go through the responsibilities and go get their checkups. That, that's all you need to do. Just go get your yearly checkup. And, um, and, and that, that, that there is a cure, it, it might, might be a long process, it might be, you know, an, an easy process, but whatever it is, just keep your, your chin up uh, and uh, every, you can go through it. You can get it's through just it. A, it's, it's a thank, passing phase. Thank you so much. I'm just going to go back to Lynn, but before I do, I just want to say that I agree with We Initiative, who said and called you a true role model and known to many for her positive outlook on life her immeasurable generosity towards others, and a genuine smile. Thank you so thank much you. for being here today. Thank and you, thank you, Aya. Thank you so much. We'll go thank back you. to you, Linda. Thank you, Yumna. And on that note, we